In a majority white school in the town of Southwick, 10 high school students held a mock slave auction on Snapchat, bidding on their black classmates. Just two days later, most of them were back in school alongside the students they had just dehumanized. The racist post and the school's response has sparked backlash, with the local chapter of the NAACP filing a formal complaint to the state, citing, quote, the district's failure to properly handle racial harassment and bullying against its black students. To discuss where the town can go from here, I'm joined by the president of the Greater Springfield NAACP, Bishop Talbert Swan II, former Lowell School Committee member Stacy Thompson, and Allison Lopez, a mother of one of the victims. Allison, I want to start with you. How's your, your daughter is 13 years old. How is she doing? What has this experience been like for her? Is she okay? Oh, it's been traumatizing for sure, right? Um, when this first started, it was very hard for us to just wrap our heads around it. Um, I did not know of the incident immediately, this specific incident immediately, um, but I found out about it a couple hours after she left the house that morning to attend school when I received the phone call and she was really devastated and she was upset. Um, she woke up that morning crying, and I didn't know why. I couldn't figure out what was actually happening at the moment until a couple hours later is when she disclosed what she found out. And has this been difficult? And you spoke at a committee reading meeting um, earlier this month, and you had called for action, and you had said that you know you were the one who kind of fields questions from her about why this happened. Mm -hmm. How has she been kind of in the aftermath of this? Very silent, very closed off. Um, don't want to talk about it. Don't want to really hear about it. Um, you know, if you bring it up, it's a difficult conversation to have. So we have the conversation when she feels comfortable enough to talk about it. So it's it's still hard today. You know, she goes to school every day and she still has to see um, these students amount her, amongst her. So it's, it's hard when she comes home in the afternoon. How was your day? I might get it was OK. And that's as far as we go. And you'd called for some action during that meeting. Yes. Have you seen any kind of response from the school? What has that been like? What have they been doing to ameliorate this? No, no response. I mean, the school had a, a one-day assembly for a couple hours, maybe a half an hour per grade um, of assembly, and that's as far as it went. Uh, we have not heard anything else. We have not heard if there's any trainings happening, um, any sort of, of steps to, to make sure that these students don't continue to do what they have done. Um, so there's really no action. There's really no action. I've gotten emails and information from several parents after this incident talking about their students. As of today, I received a, a message from another parent saying, currently she's struggling. So there is no action. Mm. And unfortunately, this is not an isolated incident. There was a 2022 article by from The Conversation about other mock slave auctions held in high schools across the country. There was one in uh, Goldston, North Carolina in March 2022. There was one in Yuba City, California, Newburgh, Oregon, Oregon uh, Barrington, Illinois. There have been several of these. Stacey, I, I want to ask you, how did we get here? What do you make of this strange and shocking trend? You know, I wish I could counted as one specific thing. I think we've you know, arrived here because there is an, a feeling that people can do anything. Um, you know, I, I would chalk it up to one person. I think we know who that one person is that kind of has mobilized um, hate and weaponized, um, weaponized it in a way that it made it attractive to some people. And it's the, you know, the lack of education it, there's there's a real pushback across the country. You've seen it um, really permeate in Florida and Texas, but in other parts of, of the country, there's a real desire for erasure of education and what really has happened mm -hmm. in this country. The fact that anyone would think, you know, to hold a slave auction would be permissible and that it would even enter someone's mind tells you there is a, a, a real lack of education of what has happened and how that would be a very painful reminder of an experience that many of us have um, have have known about in our in, in our ancestry. And Stacey, of course, you're referencing, you know, legislation in states like Florida where they have been very restrictive about teaching African American history, about American history, and, and the way that the slave trade has kind of fallen into that. Bishop Swan, you know, the work of the NAACP is to 
highlight the truth and work on equity and kind of move forward leveling the playing field, how do you think that this school and this district can move forward? Where do we where do we go from here? Well, I think the first thing that has to happen is there has to be a level of honesty um, mm. in the district. They have to they have to uh, admit uh, where they have come short in order to fix something. You've got to face it and to deny that there's a problem that exists means they 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 are not credible when um, giving lip service to uh, mitigating the particular issue. You know, a, a student slave auction illustrates, you know, the existence of a hidden culture of domination and subjugation, white supremacy and racism um, that exist in U.S. schools across the nation. And um, this is because it is passed down from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. So oft time we hear about a post-racial society. We hear about a society that is thinking less and less about race as the younger generations come along. But when you hear about 12 and 13 and 15 year old um, young white kids um, that have this this mentality, um, it kind of debunks that whole notion um, yeah. that the problem of racial discrimination is is dying down with the current generation. It was the, the late great W.E.B. Du Bois who said over 100 years ago um, that the problem of the 20th century was the problem of the color line. And I submit to yeah. you that fast forward a century later, and that statement is just as true today as it was then. Stacey, what do you think? I mean, I think in, in some ways, maybe the most optimistic way of, of looking at this would be to use it as an opportunity. Right. I know in a number of districts across the state, they've implemented curriculum from the 1619 project. There have been so many new ways to approach the teaching of race, the teaching of the history of slavery, the teaching of American history in a way that incorporates the reality of the disparities between races. What do you think? I mean, how could this be used as a way to move forward? What would you do if, if you were in charge of this district? You know, first of all, and, and I have to, you know, um, echo what the bishop just said, I think that it's important for there to be a level of honesty in, you know, in trying to implement anything. Um, you know, unfortunately, what happens is a lot of times when you have DEI as the, the backing of things, people like the, the D part of it, the diversity, which just means many, right? They'll take that part. But when you get into the equity and then the inclusion portion of it, that's where people kind of, you know, that's where there's a hard stop. I think that, you know, what has to happen is there has to be an understanding that we as a black people are more than just slavery. We as a black people have literally built this country mm -hmm. and the contributions are endless. Um, so there has to be an acknowledgement of that. There has to be an ownership of that. But the, the biggest thing for me is that it can't be something that is done as a checkbox. And quite frankly, you know, when all these organizations found it to be an attractive thing to do D, DEI, DEIB, whatever people might, whatever acronym people may be using, it became checkbox politics for them. Mm -hmm. Everything with, you know, with race um, or with black people, including them in a history that we've already owned, it needs to be intentional, right? So it can't just be something that's done to make someone feel better about a history that people don't want to own. Um, you know, the realities of, of it is we are a powerful people and we've done lots of things in this country. And to just kind of put it as, you know, this thing that, you know, just should be done to appease someone is also insulting to me. You know, one of the things that I was doing as a, a member of the school committee is I was working on lots of um, legislation, whether it be local or um, more um, more broad. And there are, you know, there are legislative legislative acts, bills that are still coming down the pipeline. But again, things need to be intentional and not because there's a political um, a time for for people to vote or you know something that seems attractive at the moment. Um, the George Floyd moment for us, a lot of people was a wave of change. And now that wave has passed and people are hoping that all of this dies down. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, that um, is part of the problem. Right. You, you're referencing, I think, uh, these two bills 
that have been kind of stalled in committee um, an act relative to anti-racism and equity in education, and that would change a lot of the curriculum around these issues. Correct. Right. Yes. I mean, it, it would change a lot. But in addition to that, you know, we have to we have to be considering: Are you hiring teachers that reflect the student population? I mean, I'm in Lowell. The majority of our student population, 75 percent of our students, are students of color, and you would hard hard be hard pressed to maybe have. 15 to 20 percent of the teachers, of the staff, of the people that are feeding into and nurturing our young people that represent them or look like them. So that in itself is another issue. You're you're trying to get work done. That's great. You're trying to get things implemented. That's great. But there need, again, for me, the big word is intentionality. Are you doing it as you know an aside? Is it something that you're doing as you know something you think about later? Or is it something that you're integrating in the ways that we conduct business? Um, because business as usual is not working. We, we've seen it. It's not working. Um, and the, the cries for change are going to just get louder. I think it's also mm. important to note that that work should not fall on the students. And the impact on the students cannot be you know, overstated. I just don't want Allison's daughter to have to feel like it is now on her to teach her fellow students. I want to hear from, uh, we have a clip of this student, Asher Rose, who um, described what it felt like. There was a, a school assembly for students to express their concerns. February 26th, this happened during Black History Month. Um, here's, mm -hmm. Asher, here's Asher Rose. Here are a few words my peers and I would use to describe the less than 30 minutes we sat in that room. Immature, unprofessional, disturbing, a political PR stunt, defensive, unaccountability, Anger, confusion, and exactly what we are expected to hear. Allison, what would you like to see immediately, immediate <laughs> action coming out of this? Oh, my goodness. Um, education is, a, is the first thing, right? As you just said, that you, will, you, you don't want my daughter to feel as though she's responsible to educate the students. That was the first thing she tried doing the first time this happened to her. She made the decision to say, I would like to have this conversation with the first student who called her out of her name to educate him to understand why it was inappropriate. So she already started that. Mm. She already felt that she needed to do that because no one else was doing that for her. So I think education is important. I think admitting that there's a problem, you know, um, that district has not admit yet there is a problem. Up to today, they have not admit there is a problem. You know, they feel it's a PR stunt, let's check a box and let's move on. They have been here a year ago or two years ago, 2022, when they had the same issue and they put the black face in the urinal and the, the other students was urinating on the face, right? Mm. So they, they checked the box then, they put the, the box away, and now here we are again two years later. Yeah, so, so with some accountability, yeah. accepting there's a problem, working on it. I just don't understand why it's not embedded in their curriculum. Right. I just don't understand why it's not embedded in a curriculum. Allison Lopez, Stacey Thompson, and Bishop Talbert Swan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.